Hey there, as promised, here is a short little uh, video to uh, give you a review session for midterm number one in business uh, uh, 101, Introduction to Business. So um, our very first midterm, as uh, I've already mentioned in the announcement, will cover content from modules one through five. And those are, of course, is really the balance of what we have covered so far this semester, modules one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, this video is intended to give you a, an overview of the topics that for sure you pretty much need to stay on top of, all right, uh, for, to do well in this exam. Now, it's a brief bit of logistics. The exam itself will be available to you on Canvas, uh, and it is comprised of 43 questions worth 58 points. Wait a minute. Why is it worth more points than there are questions? It's because of the makeup of the exam. The exam will have a small number of true-false questions. Uh, we'll have a, uh, a very small number, five to be specific, five short answer questions, and the rest of the questions will be multiple choice. Uh, however, the uh, short answer questions will be worth four points each, whereas the true and false multiple choice questions will all be worth one point each, and that's why uh, there's more points available than there are questions, because a few of the questions, um, the short answers, are worth more than one point. All right, so um, uh, to go uh, cut right to the chase, let's go through this module by module, each of the five modules, to give you a sense of what you absolutely need to be boned up on to do well in this exam, right? So module number one, as you may remember, module one was on uh, sort of introduction to the class, as well as some content on economic systems, um, uh, market competition, forces of supply and demand, those kinds of things. Remember that? So for sure, what you will need to know out of module one, you will need to know uh, the, def the definition of business, the working definition of business that we are using in this course, right? Um, you may remember also, I gave you what I told you at the time was the most important equation in business. Um, that, of course, being the profit equation, right? That there is a significant difference between profit and revenue. So remember the profit equation, go back and review that, right? Um, we spent some time talking about different forces in the external environment. And you may remember we gave you the acronym PEST, P-E-S-T. You'll want to review that. What are the four elements of PEST when we think about real world analysis of the external environment of business, right? <clears throat> um, we also covered, once we finished talking about the elements in the external environment, we talked about um, planned versus market economies, right? The different economic systems in the world and the pros and cons of each, right? So you should be conversant in that. Um, we also talked about the, in a market economy, uh, how the market responds to forces of supply and demand. You may remember that was even a quiz question for module one, right? How does the law of supply work? How does the law of demand work? Um, you will want to review that. You want to make sure you know exactly what we're talking about here, right? That um, you uh, uh, occasionally students make the mistake of uh, putting the cart before the horse. And what I mean by that is the law of supply is really talking about suppliers responding to a market price, right? So in other words, the market price is set um, by uh, into equal. It's a term, the equilibrium price is determined by the interaction of buyers and sellers in the marketplace, and then suppliers respond to that market price. Okay, that's what the law of supply is all about. The law of demand, similarly, right? Buyers like you and me, we respond to a market price that is set in place at equilibrium by uh, the interaction of buyers and sellers in the marketplace. So remember, uh, law of supply and demand is about suppliers and consumers, respectively, responding to a market price and to changes in that market price, right? All right. We also talked about levels of competition in a particular market or industry, um, and we gave you four flavors of that. You may remember that, right? Perfect competition, monopolistic competition, uh, oligopoly and monopoly, right? So make sure you understand 
what are the distinctions between those four categories, right? And then finally, we talked about measuring and assessing the overall performance and stability of an entire economic system. So um, that was at the tail end of the chapter or the tail end of that module. Uh, make sure that you review that stuff from the text as well, right? So that's um, pretty much the stuff you're going to encounter from module number one. Module number two, as you may remember, had to do with ethics and corporate social responsibility. So um, you will need to know um, and uh, be able to discuss intelligently uh, the whole notion of ethics, right? Personal ethics versus organizational ethics. Um, the, the text does a good job, I think, of spelling out the difference between those two things. We talk about that in the lecture as well. Um, where do business ethics come from, right? Um, we asked you the question um, and, and provided an answer. How can you make sure you stay out of jail, right? Um, and many students did not, uh, when they answered that quiz question, did not take the time to review the video uh, lecture on that. Now, remember, this is non-textbook content that I gave you. So you want to make sure you review that lecture, how to stay out of jail, because there's a particular suggestion there that is far more than simply, well, I'm just not going to break the law. That's not really the issue at hand, all right? So um, we also provided a framework to assess ethical behavior. Um, remember, we talked about uh, the sense of uh, organizational justice along four different dimensions. You want to review that. Um, we also talked about the four uh, different levels of corporate social responsibility responses. We defined CSR as well as provided um, four categories or typologies that typically organizations will end up uh, responding to this call for social responsibility, right? Um, and then finally, we ended that module talking about the whole notion of love as a guidepost or a better way to have a conversation about ethics. And um, again, uh, you want to make sure you, you review the, the, the video lecture content on that because um, a few folks occasionally just guess without really having understood the discussion, the conversation we're having on that topic. Um, and uh, you will, uh, you'll need to know what, what we're really suggesting um, in uh, the lecture content there. All right. That is module number two. Module number three uh, was a pretty straightforward module on different forms of business ownership with a little bit of entrepreneurism thrown in at the end. Right, so uh, you, um, from if you completed the first case study, you're very well aware there are three primary flavors in the United States that uh, ways that you can own a business: uh, sole proprietorship, partnership, and corporation. And there are noted pros and cons to each form of ownership. You will want to be conversant in what are those pros and cons for each of those different forms. Uh, or options of corporate ownership uh, of business ownership here in the United States. All right. Um, we had a discussion as well about the importance of small business, uh, not only to us uh, as a country, but also for you in your career. Right. You'll want to review that. And then finally, we gave you a short um, introduction to the whole topic of entrepreneurism. And that is something that you will want to review as well. All righty. Um, that's a, a relatively short module, quite frankly. Okay, so um, uh, the next module, module number four, was the module on global business or international business, right? And um, so we provided, a, you know, a discussion about global business and why is it complicated? Why is it complex? You may remember we made the suggestion that global business is just business, uh, in a sense, which is complicated enough, right? Earning revenue keeping your expenses down, earning a profit, growing your business, et cetera, et cetera, right? But now international or global business is additionally complicated because you have added all these layers of complication and complexity due to the fact that you want to now start doing business with folks in another country, right? And so there are different layers of that. We talked about that. Um, we had a brief discussion about the World Trade Organization and ways to promote and manage uh, uh, international business activity. Um, we talked about different forms of competitive advantage. You may want to review that stuff. Um, that stuff, by the way, can be a little complicated. So you really do want to make sure you understand the differences there. Comparative advantage, absolute advantage, those kinds of concepts, right? Um, 
and then finally we had a um, uh, a discussion about um, uh, different modes of entry, right? Once a business decides it's going to start embracing some level of international activity, we talked about different flavors of that, right? From exporting to licensing and franchising to joint ventures to full boat foreign direct investment, right? So you want to um, rehearse and review the pros and cons of each of those different modes of entry. Um, then we also uh, talked about um, uh, the whole aspect of cultural differences and the fine work of the researcher Geerta Hofstede and the uh, different dimensions of cultural differences. You want to be aware of those, make sure you can identify uh, which categories we're talking about as well as on the uh, two extremes, what are we talking about in the differences of cultures along each of those different uh, dimensions, all righty? Um, and then there was, there's going to be a few brief questions on different methods of protectionist trade policy. Remember that we have things like quotas and tariffs and uh, embargoes. Or just you know, you, you want to rehearse that stuff from the tail end of module number four. All right. Now, finally, we have module number five, the module we just covered. So we presume that you are. Uh, most familiar with that material, right? And what did we talk about there? Um, you may remember we talked about um, the uh, uh, the importance of management in organizations and in individuals' lives, even, right? We gave you the example of the uh, the, the barista working at two very very different organizations, and how, quite frankly, um, the customer is going to have a different experience depending on which place you go to because of management, right? Um, we also talked about what are the four functions of management. You may remember that, right? Um, as well as uh, different types and levels of managers. Had a little bit of a discussion on strategy. What is strategy? What's SWOT analysis, right? And then finally, we had a discussion on planning and control. Those are the kinds of topics you'll need to be familiar with. But of course, you sort of just went through all of that in the last week or so, all right? So... Uh, I don't want to make this video any longer than it needs to be, but those for sure are the topics that you will need to be uh, up to speed with in order to do well on this midterm exam. Um, occasionally, students will ask, what's the best way to study? And um, I would tell you the best way to study is to be very, very aware, first of all, of this list of topics and make sure that you have reviewed for each of these topics I've listed in this video, both the textbook content and the video lecture content. You want to be up to speed on both of those uh, to do the very best when you encounter questions dealing with each of those topics. Alrighty, I hope that's helpful. I realize this is somewhat brief, uh, but I didn't want to make it a mile long. So hopefully this will provide enough ammunition for you to do a great job on the exam. The exam is not designed to be uh, needlessly tricky or complex. It um, is built and intentionally built to give you a good chance to hit a home run. And so that is what I wish for you, that you do a great job, you study hard and do a great job and hit a home run on this midterm exam. All righty. So that concludes the review for uh, midterm exam number one. Wish you the best of luck and we will chat again. Take care.